Okay, question eight. Now, question eight is a worked uh, problem on a auto cycle. There's the auto cycle shown to you there. Now, auto is the adiabatic one. Remember, we had the uh, the comparison between the Stirling, which is isothermal, and the auto, which is adiabatic. Apart from that, they both have the constant volume uh, compression and expansion <coughs> on either end. Approxi well, theoretically, they're not really, not really constant volume because the piston doesn't come to a stop, well, not for any net length of time. Okay, so uh, just revising that again. So what, what does it mean? So <clears throat> we start off at a low temperature, big one, right? So start there. Now, I'm going to have, so this is isothermal. This is the Stirling engine isothermal compression and then we heat up the gas giving us constant volume isothermal constant volume pressurizing and then we do a power stroke which is the expansion of the hot gas that's my power stroke takes us down to here and then the exhaust is exhausted out at constant volume that's it that's a sterling cycle now remember the bigger the area inside this pv diagram <laughs> the more power you get. Now, what happens if we go to a adiabatic? So because the revs per minute is so high in a petrol engine, it doesn't have time to do isothermal. It can't be constant temperature. It's going way too quick. In fact, it's probably very close to adiabatic, not perfectly adiabatic, so it's a polytropic of a almost adiabatic number. So it's probably about here. But anyway, let's do just a pure adiabatic. So this time we're compressing the gas. Now, as we compress it and it's adiabatic, the pressure's going up because it's heating up the gas. So that extra heat has caused this to increase the pressure. And uh, we've already moved the temperature before we've even burnt the fuel. Now we burn the fuel, takes us up to that same point. And now <clears throat> we have an expansion or the power stroke. Uh, likewise, power stroke is losing heat as it expands. So we don't have as much pressure as we would have had at the end of the stroke. And, then we, and that's also cooled the gas down quite a bit by expanding, and then we take it back down. So our PV diagram for a adiabatic process is quite a lot less area than the Stirling engine. That's why the Otto engine is not as efficient as a Stirling engine. Mind you, you can't run the Stirling engine at 10,000 RPM either. So there's your trade-off. So the, the Otto ends up giving you much better power to weight ratio but not as much efficiency right so here we go we're going to do the auto which is the adiabatic um, compression and expansion strokes not the sterling this is auto and we're going to use these numbers here all right so away we go so we're doing a find the compression temperature so so let's just see where we're going to start this. Remember, the cycle actually starts from zero where we suck the air in, which is stroke. This is a four-stroke engine, not a two-stroke. Uh, the cycle by itself is actually a two-stroke engine, but the four-stroke has this extra um, two strokes here to suck the air, uh, suck the fuel in, and to push the exhaust out. So suck the fuel in, not to one. Compress it, one to two. Burn it, two to three. Expansion power stroke, three to four exhausted out um four to one and one to zero is pushing the exhaust out so the exhaust is open and then exhaust is pushed out one to zero so that's your four strokes right so where are we actually going to start here let's have a look at the numbers we've got compression ratio okay that's very interesting now what's this one inlet inlet pressure where's inlet pressure so 52 degrees so there's my inlet and there's my temperature Heat supply. All right, so that's kilojoules, so that's the heat. QS. Find the compression temperature, T2. So we're trying to find what is the temperature when we compress this um, this um, gas. All right, <clears throat> so we have a um, an inlet pressure. Notice that inlet pressure is 96.5. What's the inlet pressure? What's the pressure normally of the air? It's higher than that, isn't it? It's like 101.3. So 
We've actually got negative pressure going on, so obviously we're not running the turbo. So, and that's because the piston's sucking the air in, so it's going to have to vacuum it in. So we have a pressure that's below the uh, the atmospheric pressure. Makes sense. 52 degrees. So we have some temperatures and things. Now, how do we do these things? We do them all using gas processes. So the, here's my gas process. So I need to know what gas process am I talking about when I'm trying to answer question eight. Right. I'm trying to find the compression temperature, so I must be going from one to two. So that's our first thing we need to work out is what part of this whole process are we doing? Because we, we basically do each one of these stages as a single gas process or single gas question. So I'm going to go from one to two. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm compressing gas and I've got my properties for one and I'm trying to find uh, T2, so my temperature at 0.2. All right, so I've got T1, it's 51, 52 degrees, that's T1. And I also have P1, which is my pressure at 0.1. I've also got compression ratio, which could be kind of handy, got 7.1 there, so that will give me something to do with uh, the ratio of the volumes. <laughs> All right, so so what, what type of um, process is it? Adiabatic. So I'll go to my gas processes chart, this fellow, and look at adiabatic. Here we have adiabatic, which is one of these. And I'm looking at temperatures and volumes and pressures. So what have I got here? I've got temperatures and I've got V1 to V2. Now V1 to V2 is actually a compression ratio. So we could use this formula here. T1, T2 over T1 equals V2 over V1, all that stuff. So let's grab this row because that's the one we're going to be using for this um, whole question. Steal that. And it's the polytropic one, this one here. Different than that. Because uh, we, we're doing adiabatic, which would just mean where we see N is going to be gamma. Steal this off here. There we go. That should help us because that's going to be our guesses. That's that's going to be relevant for the entire question because that is a polytropic gas process. Well, not the whole piece, the whole of uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 and also 0 0.3 to 4 we can use it there as well. Okay, here we go. So which one shall we use? Well, this one looks promising. We've got temperatures and volumes. You notice how I said that, that this one looks promising. There's no particular process, oh, you use this equation first and this one second. No, you just look at all your equations, look at your stuff and see which one you can run. What can what one can I do? I don't have T1 and T2, so I can't do this one yet. I don't have any, I don't have my second temperature, but that's what I'm trying to work out. So I'm going to use this T2 over T1. Now what's V1 on V2? Now there's nothing about volumes here. There's no volume given. We don't have a V1 and we don't have a V2. No idea. Doesn't say that it's a you know two cylinder engine or something, but we do know V1 and V2. V1 is the big volume, so that's V1, and V2 is the little volume, V2. Now, that if I do V1 over V2, that is the compression ratio. So, V1, big one, over V2, the little one, is actually 7.1 because that's what that says 7.1 is the compression ratio. So, that means T2. To T1 is 7.1 to the power of 1.4 because we're using a adiabatic which means that N equals gamma and for air 
gamma equals 1.4. That's why n becomes 1.4. That's it. And we do have our T1, which is not 52, that's in Celsius, so it would be very naughty. 273.15, just to be accurate, plus 52 gives us. Two seven three degrees gives us three twenty five fifteen and fifteen Kelvin. It's not degrees Kelvin, it's just Kelvin. <clears throat> so that is T one, and we're trying to find T two. So uh, we can rearrange this. So T two equals T one times seven point one to the 1.4 and T1 is 325 and throw that in the calculator times 7.1 to the power of 1. we get 5, wow well, that's a high temperature isn't it, 5056 and that's Kelvin, all right? So if you wanted that in Celsius, we're going to subtract 273. That would be 4783. A little mistake. I thought that temperature was a bit high. If you have a closer look, it's n minus one. It's not to the 1.4. It's 1.4 minus one. It should be all the way through. So those are wrong. Go back. I'm just thinking of an engine knocking down with 5,000 degree gas inside it. It's not going to last very long. But it's like blue hot. <clears throat> All right, let's do that number again. Oop. Okay, we've got 325.5 times 7.1 to the power of 0 0.4. It's not very good either. N. Three point five point one five times seven point one to the power of times two. That's not correct. Ah, oh, oh, three point five. I think I'll do it by hand. Here we go. 325.15 times 7.1 to the power of 7.1 to the power of That looks a bit more realistic. 0.176 Kelvin. So if we want that in Celsius, we have to subtract. Be 439 degrees Kelvin at Celsius. Look at mine here. Alright, see how we go. Now, what options have we got here? There is a Kelvin there, and everybody is Kelvin. 712.176. Right, now the next question is find the maximum temperature T3. So fortunately this matches up with our diagram T3 up here. So that's 
what happens when you burn it? So what's the maximum temperature at T3? So how do we do that? Well, heat supply, we've heated, we've heated it up by a certain amount. <coughs> All right, Q, uh, Q equals change of internal energy, and change of internal energy is MC delta T. So what's actually happening is that we have constant volume. So in this second stage, right, this, this process from 2 to 3 is constant volume. Now, if you have constant volume, then when you look at the um, first law of thermo, delta U equals heat minus W. Guess what? Constant volume has no W. It's out. There's no um, work caused by expansion. So delta U is Q, which means delta U, which you already know is uh, changing term of energy, M C W V, delta T, sorry, that's change of internal energy, is the same. So we can use that is equal to that. So we can say Q because MC delta V delta T. That's handy. So now we can use that in this next question here. Q equals MC delta T. Be careful though because there's two C's. Which C are we using here? It's CV. So I'm treating the uh, gas as air, even though it's got fuel in it, but close enough. Um, find the maximum temperature T3. So delta T would be the change in temperature. So we're going to use this uh, formula kind of backwards because we do know the Q. That's it there. So Q is known. Um, because this, this 990 is per kilo, per, per one kilo, we're doing a... Uh, classic engineering trick of doing things by one second or one kilo so that m will be a one that's it uh, we can look up cv and therefore we can get delta t that's the one we're trying to find so let's rearrange the formula so delta t will equal the heat divided by m cv 990 kilojoules uh, better make the kilo there. Massive one. And our CV. So we need our properties for air and CV. Now we're looking for the um, CV for air. There it is here. 718 in kilojoules. That's 718. We're using base units. So CV there is 718. Now that's temperature difference. All right, so cool. Right, that's the temperature difference, but that's the temperature difference between T2 and T3. So delta, delta T is T3 minus T2. Now we already know what T2 is, we know what that is, so T3 is the one we're trying to find. So T3 is delta T um, plus T2. So we've got 1378 plus T2 was 712. We'll add 74.76 thousand and ninety one two thousand ninety one degrees Kelvin. Good, right. Find the expanded temperature at T 
four. So uh, we're going around the cycle, obviously, uh, up to T4 now. So going back to the chart, T4 is the adiabatic expansion, which is that we've gone up to here at three. We found what our temperature was at three. Now we're going to expand that from three to four. When we do an expansion, we have a um, one of these we can use the pressures or we can use the um, volume ratio we do have the volume ratio so it's a nice one to keep we also have the temperatures here and what uh, which one find which one find temperature uh, t4 temperature so let's pick on the temperatures and the velocity ratio so that's actually the same equation as we're using before i might just switch colors now so i can draw in here so we're going from three to four this time so we're trying to find T4 here, and once again, this is an adiabatic expansion. So we'll be using this uh, the same formula, T2 over T1, equals the um, so T2 over T1 equals V2 over V1 to the Gamma minus one. Now be careful because compression ratio was V2 over V1, but this time we're going backwards, we're expanding. So our compression ratio this time, V2 over V1, is actually 1 over 7.1. Because we're going to reverse the V2. The V2 is still the last one, in this case, the last one is uh, ran the other way. Sorry, that's B1 and B2. Let's fix that one up. Although we would have got positive compression this year. So B1 and B2. Just double check. Yes, yeah, so the T's and B's are in full burst. All right. So here we go we should be able to do this so we're trying to find t2 which is actually a t4 uh, in our graph so so t2 the final temperature is t1 times <clears throat> 1 over 7.1 to the power of 0.4 And our T1 is our previous temperature from the last question there. It's 2009, 2009, 2009, 2 and 7.1 to the 0.4. Okay, it's cooled itself down quite a bit, so it's now 954 and 667. Degrees Kelvin, 954 and 667. Temperature there in Kelvin. All right, next question in question 11, we're asking uh, the indicated work per kilogram of air. So we need to do some work calculations. The amount of work is P1 V1 minus P2 V2 over N minus 1. That works out the amount of work done in that process. <clears throat> now, in order to do that, we need to know what pressure 1 and pressure 2 are. So what we're going to be doing is calculate how much work it took to compress the gas 1 to 2 and then work out how much work we got out when the gas expanded from three to four. So there's a double process there. And we have to find out what our P2 is. To do P2, we have to solve this one. So this one's going to be a little bit more work than the other ones. Let's switch colors to something else. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got this other equation now. So the, the ratios of pressures because we're gonna we have to go and track out our pressures so that we can use this work um, 
formula here. We can't use the work formula at the moment because we don't have any pressures. So uh, the only pressure we have is P1, which was told to us here as um, number five. So that's the start. We don't have P2 though, and that's the first one we need to find. Then we need to find P3 and P4, and then calculate one to two and subtract it from three to four. Bit of a process. Okay, P2 of P1, T2 and T1. Let's write that formula down there for And the power is n over n minus 1. Okay, and we're trying to find P2, literally, P actually P2. So P2 is going to be P1, which was our net pressure. Fortunately, it's in absolute already, so we can write that straight in. 96,500 that times T2 right back up here T2 is 712,176 and T1 was our initial temperature into somewhere 52 degrees, which is converted over becomes um, 325.15 to the 1.4 divided by 1.4 calculator. So seven twelve one seven divided by three twenty five to the power of bracket one point four that to the power of bracket 96 by 100 74.76 divided by 25 to the power of bracket 1.4 over 0.4 close bracket equals 15.55 and then that's multiplied that's basically your pressure um, change times 96,500 so the pressure is 1.5 megapascals coming up isn't it 1.5 6 Pascals. Keep, keeping base units. So 1.5 megapascals, that's just the compression, so that's P2. We found P2. Right, that doesn't get anywhere near finished, because that's one of them. Now we're going to do P3. P3 is the same. Same equation. P Three over P two will equal T three over T two for the one point four goes up. So we do the next one. P three. It's not eighty percent. Heat supply pressure. 
So this is a constant volume. Okay, so we have to go and look at the other row for constant volume process now. So it's a constant volume from step two to step three. stick it up there so we can have a bit of room okay now what are we trying to do we're doing a constant volume and we're trying to get the pressure and the temperature okay so it's a little bit simpler this time the equations um, simply this one here the temperatures and pressures are related to p1 over t1 equals P2 over T2. We're trying to find P2, so P2 equals P1 T2 over T1. Just make sure we use base units. So P1. Now, of course, uh, this is from 2 to 3, so we should probably change all of our numbers, all of our 1s and 2s, and all of our 2s are 3s. So P3 equals P2, T3 over T2. Okay, P2 is this one. Times T3, we've done T3 already up here. 2091 and that's all over T2. T2 is up here, which is our 712176. So this would be P3. My 1500 times 291 divided by 712. 44, oh, some serious pressure now 4.4 4 megapascals. 4406922. That's what's that's 4.4 megapascals. So certainly you bump the pressure up quite a bit now. All right, so let's just separate those and do the next one. All right, now I've got one more to go. We're going to try and find P4. Now the P4 is a uh, adiabatic process, it's same as this one was, so we're going to do the same way. So P4 is this adiabatic now, from 3 to 4. So P4 over P3 equals T4 over T3 to the All right, so uh, P4 equals P3. P3 you've already calculated, which is this one here, is P3. P3 
times T4, put it up here. 154 over T3 to be 1.4 over 0.4. is P3 times bracket over 2A9 minus close bracket to the power of bracket 1.4 divided by 0 bracket equals 283.334 and those are in Pascal so now we're down to 200 kilopascals about, <clears throat> about almost three times atmospheric pressure so the exhaust does have pressure but it's not ridiculous four megapascals it's gone down to <clears throat> a couple of hundred all right we still haven't finished the question though so that gets us To find all those pressures. But we're trying to get the. And so that's an adiabatic. So this is constant. Well, I might just write this down. So this is adiabatic here. Adiabatic one, two, two. This is, I say, I say, choric. Two, two, three, and this is adiabatic. I need more space. Three, two, four. Good. Now, haven't finished. Heat supply. Find the indicated work. So we need to work for these two. So what's happening between one and two's work, and what's happening between four, three and four's work? Uh, we can ignore two and three there's no work done because it's constant volume so if i can work out the work for this one and we'll work for this one subtract the two then i've got my answer so what's the work now this is back to the adiabatic formula this is uh, the work p1 v1 minus p2 v2 over n minus one and i'm definitely running out of space <coughs> Probably steal some out of here. So let's have a look at that formula again. So P one V one minus P two V two. over n minus one which is gamma minus one for us all right and that's exactly what we're trying to do to end the uh point one point two so this carries from here down to here so p1 v1 and p2 v2 all right so they put the numbers in so p1 is 325 .15. We don't have volume. Um, oh, indicate work. So that would be the work per something. Yeah, per kilogram of air. Kilogram of air is a pretty big volume. So 
Let's give it measure of volume. Okay, so let's have a do it. Kilogram. Yeah, we've got to do one kilogram worth of air for that. So we need to work out the volume of our balloon. We're definitely in the outer space here. <laughs> PV is an RT. <coughs> and we're trying to find the and we're using one kilogram. So one kilogram times two eighty seven, so that's a um, Characteristic gas constant in that's in kilojoules, so that's 287 kilo base units. One times 287 times the initial temperature, which was 320. I'm in the space. Initial temperature was um, 325. All of that is in the pressure line, which was 96. Time a cubic meter for it to be that big, so we got 0 0.967126. Cubic meters, that's V1. V2 obviously is going to be divided by 7.1, which is our compression ratio. So let's divide that by 7.1, gives the volume of 0.1362. Give it made it's all right. So now we can put the numbers in. So this is if this would work. Work is P1, <coughs> which was 96. Still a bit more space. Never any question. P1, which is 96,500 times V1, which is this 0.96786 minus P2, which is 1.5 megapascals. Times V2, which is 0.1362, and that's all divided by n minus 1, which is 0.4. So the amount of work that it takes to compress the gas is, drum roll, and a bit number, minus. Yes. 
Yes, it's negative work because we have to compress it. And then we divide by 0.4. Minus 2 is 2, seven seven. Six nine two, and that's work in joules. So it took two hundred and seventy seven joules per pretty much cubic meter or kilogram of air to compress. That's the compression. Of it. And what about the working stroke? So we had to uh, do exactly the same thing for this one. So we need a P3 um, and a P4. So B, B3 and a B4. So um, B3 is obviously going to be 2. So that's B3. This is B2. And B4 equals 7.1 volts of B3, uh, which obviously is equal to V1 again. So this time the V1 and the V2 basically uh, swapped around inversely. So we're ready to go for this next one. So W <coughs> equals, oh, I just write this out. So we've got P, make sure we get all the Numbers right, so this is now three and four. So one becomes three B3 minus P4 B4 over minus one. Okay, so P3 is the big pressure. Times V3, which is times V2, which is 0.1362, minus P4, which is the low pressure, 283334. If I haven't made a mistake in you, it could be a miracle. And times not point nine six seven seventy six. All of that's divided by not point four. Calculator. Divided by 0.4 equals so 815. I'm pretty sure that's a higher power than the compression, which is just as well. Otherwise, their engine wouldn't be an engine. 815, 306. 815, 306 joules. Let's compare that to the other one, which was. Yes, 277, so yeah, we've definitely got some extra power out of the power stroke compared to our compression strokes, and now we can subtract one from the other. Isn't this an easy question, eh? So the entire quiz worth work. So subtracting that from the other one. So my plus memory equals five thirty seven six fifteen.
So work three to four minus work one to two equals that. Cheers. Five thirty seven six fifteen. Jules per kilogram. Jules per kilogram. Oh, I got Jules per kilogram. Find the indicated work per kilogram of it. Jules per kilogram. Yeah. And yeah, it's amazing. All right, the last question in here. This one will probably be a lot easier than the last one because we did all the hard work uh, finding the. This last one here, finding the uh, theoretical efficiency. So, back on here, the efficiency is this work output divided by heat supply. That is the efficiency. So, that's all I need to do. So, efficiency is the work output divided by the supply of heat. Now, I've done all this for one kilo, so it doesn't matter how many kilos we use, as long as we use the same amount. And so, our work output is this one here, 537, um, we'll do it in kilo, 0.615 kilojoules of work for every 990 kilojoules of heat supplied. Right, so that's it. Five thirty seven six five what about nine ninety. Our efficiency is fifty four point three. That's assuming you have absolutely no friction, everything's perfect in three point five percent. That's your maximum efficiency you could ever get if everything was perfect. No friction, uh, no long heat transfers, blah, blah. All right, that's it for question 12.